Hi everyone, this is Dr. Johnson, and this particular lecture is going to be a brief introduction on lipids and health. Obesity. Oftentimes people are going to say that in order for you to lose weight, an obese people eat too much. Uh, one thing to note is that high fat diets cannot make you fat, however it can contribute to obesity. Now, the reason that we're talking about that is because fat provides nine calories per gram compared to protein and carbohydrates, which is only four calories per gram. So you get more than double the amount of calories for the same volume. So if you're consistently overeating your calories, then that can lead to obesity. However, it is important to also note that fat can help reduce weight because it provides satiety, so maybe you're not eating as much food. So one thing that's interesting, this picture here is fat cells. So fat cells increase and multiply as we gain weight. And then once we lose weight, we still have the same number of fat cells, they just get smaller. So the cell fights to stay large, which is why people who are chronic yo-yo dieters have a hard time with maintaining the weight loss. So it's important to start from a young age in order to you know, have healthy habits and lifestyle factors to control weight. Uh, what about cancer? There's some evidence that links dietary fat and cancer. However, most of it is inconclusive. The one that they do know that does have a correlation is that they see an increased risk of colon cancer when there is an increase in saturated fat and highly processed meats, so things like salami and bacon. Now, it's important to note that you were consuming quite a large amount in order for that increase, and there haven't been any studies that have isolated and looked at, well, fiber reduces colon cancer, so if the person is consuming a higher fat content but also higher fiber, would they still get colon cancer? So that is not a cause and effect, it's just a correlation, and so there are limitations, of course, to that. A ketogenic diet is very popular in our day and age for weight loss. However, the ketogenic diet was originally intended um, to use for medical nutrition therapy for people who suffer from um, seizures with epilepsy. So for whatever reason, when the brain actually turns to using ketones instead of glucose, they have a reduced number of seizures. And the diet is about 80 to 95% fat there's about 10 to 15% of protein and then 5% carbohydrates. So it is important to note that the people who are going under a ketogenic diet for MNT or medical nutrition therapy are being monitored to ensure that they're not getting any type of nutritional deficiencies. And also it is a very challenging diet to stick to. Most people who are doing a keto diet for weight loss are actually following more of a modified ketogenic diet, and they're not consuming enough fat to really be in that ketosis state. We also do not know the long-term ramifications because most of the people who have this as a medical nutrition therapy for epilepsy only follow it for about two years. So that's something that is still out and we don't know enough information about. Now, looking at omega-3 health, if you recall in the last video, we talked about how um, ALA is your essential fatty acid, so our body cannot make it, and then our body can make the EPA and DHA. Now, DHA is highlighted here because that's where the majority of the research is actually looked at, is looking at DHA, um, because they can also measure EPA and DHA in the bloodstream, so it's more of an objective study versus a subjective of somebody saying, hey, I eat fatty fish every week. So the documented health benefits behind consuming omega-3s is that it shows to decrease vascular disease, it reduces inflammation, it decreases type 2 diabetes, it improves brain development, and it's shown to decrease dementia and Alzheimer's. So these are all really positive, beneficial factors, and this is why, too, um, DHA is actually fortified in baby formulas to make sure that that child has really good brain development. So it is important to have two servings of fatty fish per week or take some type of supplement. So this is, again, a really brief introduction. So in conclusion, we want to shift our focus onto consuming mostly unsaturated fats, 
fat won't make you fat, and the omega-3, specifically the EPA and DHA, provide a whole host of health benefits.